Good morning. Hi. Hi, I'm here today with Sergi, and my name is Sarah Stewart. Um, and today we're going to be working on some design. And why don't we start the day by talking to Sergi a little bit about his background and where he comes from and what he's doing today. Sure. Uh, so I'm a hybrid designer. I describe myself as a hybrid designer, which means that I'm kind of both a visual designer as well as, well as a product designer. I oh. have experience in working on both the agency side as well as the in-house. Nice. I am from Ukraine originally. Uh, I relocated to the U.S. five years ago, uh, and basically straight from you know straight to San Francisco to the Bay Area. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe we can ask Chat where everyone is from today. I'd like to know where everyone's dialing in from, uh, what the weather's like maybe over there. Today it's pretty nice in San Francisco. Very nice. Yesterday was pretty cold. I don't know if you were in town yesterday. Uh, yesterday I was in Mexico. So oh, so you had beautiful weather yesterday. Yes, totally. <laughs> gotcha, it so it's a little bit chilly coming back maybe. Yeah, it's fine. I'm used to it now. Great. I like this type of weather. Yeah. Um, and today, uh, for the participation challenge, we have my favorite prize, which I'm super pumped about, which are these XD socks. So please make some noise, talk about where you're from um, in order to try to win these, because I'll be super jealous of whoever ends up getting these. It looks like we got some people from some sunny places, Indiana, Pakistan, Berlin, Cameroon. Chile is negative one degree. That's a bit cold, actually, for Chile, I feel like. Um, Mongolia, India, lots of different places, lots of different people. Welcome. We're excited to have you today. So make sure you make some noise, make sure you ask questions, um, and we'll be handing out those socks in a little bit. Um, but yeah, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Okay, so today we're going to, de to be designing a travel planner, Ooh. basically an app that will allow you to uh, plan your trip together with your friends or family or just alone. Uh, the core experience is basically to plan ahead so that, uh, you know, if we're talking about the product challenges, it's usually hard to combine all of the, you know, itineraries like for the airline tickets as well as the hotels. Uh, museums, restaurants, Uber, you know, stuff like that. So ideally I would like to gather it all together in one experience where you would just have one itiner itinerary for all of the experiences and then, you know, the app could just basically confirm the booking for you gotcha. as well as, you know, everything that you need in order awesome. to just relax and have fun. Have a good trip, yeah. Yes, totally. Do you travel a lot then? I do, I love to travel, I love to travel, so it's one of my, you know, favorite things to do. What's your favorite place to travel to right now? I'd say that I really like Europe. Because, yeah, uh, nice. you know, I'm from Europe and I feel, uh, you know, kind of attached to it uh, culturally uh, because of, you know, food and, you know, everything that is there. Delicious but, food, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, it is delicious. Uh, I really like Italy. Uh, for, oh my gosh, for I need to get to Italy. I feel like to have the pasta and nice coffee. I'm a yeah. big coffee drinker. It seems like a good place to travel to. Yeah, I was there last year. It was great. Uh, the south of France as well. Oh. Uh, Monaco, so Beautiful. it's very good there. I've heard good things about the south of France. I feel like there's lots of poetry and stories about yeah. just relaxing there. So very scenic. And the sea as well. It's amazing. Awesome. I love the sea and ocean as well. You should go in the summer. Yeah, in the summer, not the winter. The no. winter is not good. No. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Getting some travel tips as we do the application here. Yes, absolutely. All right. And maybe chat can tell us where your favorite vacation spots are. I'd love to hear about where you like to visit. I think my favorite place so far has been Japan because I like the food there a lot. Um, I'd love to go. Yeah. Yeah, the ramen is delicious, okonomiyaki is really good. So yeah, I love traveling awesome. too. This will be very helpful in terms of an app for me to learn uh, what I need to plan when I go on trips too. We can think Perfect. about all those things. I bet it's a mind-blowing experience in Japan. Yeah, I minor in Japanese language and culture, so I lived there abroad for a little bit, and it was really, really great. It's a good awesome. experience, I think, to travel, so this is a really good topic. Perfect. Good choice. Yeah. So maybe we can get started. What are we going to start with here today? So maybe we could talk about the, basically, I mean, the, uh, I usually start with uh, pen and paper. Uh, sometimes awesome. I usually, uh, some, some, sometimes I start with uh, wireframes, not the pen and paper. But in this case, it's probably better to just start with uh, rough uh, wireframes, kind of low fidelity wireframes. And uh, it's basically, it saves you time. 
You yeah. know, you start with uh, whiteboarding or anything that you have in hand, and then you just basically, you know, sketch it out. I can see here that we have the paper from the hotel you're staying at. Is that right? Right. Yeah, so you're <laughs> sketching this, um, putting your ideas down on paper, really just getting the ideas out there, right? That's part of the process that you go through? Correct, yes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, especially if you work at a uh, tech company, it's better to gather together with uh, product managers and you know all of the stakeholders and whiteboard together. It will save you a lot of time. Awesome. So maybe, yeah, if you could talk a little bit about the process you go through, I think that'd be really valuable for everyone in chat to know what kind of process you go through. Maybe it's different for an agency versus in-house, or is it the same? I'd say it's Almost the same. The difference is that when you work at an agency, you basically have to jump from a project to a project uh, several times a year, while when you work in a company, you basically sort of like I could com compare it to bearing a child, sort of. So, you know, basically you have a baby and this product is your baby and then you just, uh, you know, like improve it over time. So you have plenty of time to do, to do so, as well as the user data so you can polish the experience and uh, improve. Awesome, so it's a labor of love versus going through rapid iterations, maybe Correct. the agency side. Yeah. Great, so I think someone, Kulan, said his favorite place is Israel, because it's so different from what we see in the news, and the tech scene there is amazing. I would love to travel to Israel, that sounds amazing. And the Netherlands, so relaxed and full of creative people. I want to go to the Netherlands as well. This is making me feel like I just need to travel more. This <laughs> is going to be really good and inspiring for my travel it's list. It's meant to inspire and, you know, so that you want to travel. Awesome. Okay, well, let's take a look at these wireframes. I know we got the camera so we yes. can see what you got here. It's not much, but I wanted to start with something. And uh, so basically, ideally, it's better to uh, come up with a structure with the, you know, like basically the core pages. And in this case, I decided to go with five. Uh, the first one is called Explore. So let's uh, not uh, forget that the main experience would be to craft the perfect trip. That's why I decided to place it in the center. So basically you will see this plus, it indicates that you can create a new trip. But uh, just imagine if it was just the, basically, I mean, this is the core experience, but uh, usually when people open the app for the first time, they might see the zero content screen, which would be uh, you know empty because you don't have any experiences, experiences yet. So it's better to craft something for you before you start your own trip. So that uh, the first step here is called Explore. This is where I would love to introduce some cool destinations, uh, you know, I don't know, like multi-city uh, trips or fitness tours or, you know, if you're interested in food, uh, something like that. So there's, you could, uh, the app could just uh, craft something like a grid with all of the different uh, insp inspiring experiences you could start with. Awesome. Uh, the second uh, tab, so this is where I would have, uh, first I, I thought that it would be great to have alerts or activity. This is when your friends would, uh, you know, share their experiences or agree or accept your uh, trips so that they could collaborate with you on them together. But then I decided to go with my trips as number two, and then um, you know we might change it uh, while we're designing and wireframing. But in general, for now, it's just my trips, where you would see the uh, upcoming trips as well as the past trips. Uh, then the activity uh, would go next. This is where you would see all of the notifications, basically. And then my account would go last, which is pretty common for uh, the mobile apps. And this maybe is other the card structure. settings and things like that. Correct, yes. Yeah. So settings, uh, our beloved uh, GDPR, yeah. which is a big thing now. Nice. <laughs> Everyone's joking about it. And uh, what does GDPR stand for? It's basically privacy policy. Uh, we know that in Europe there is a law uh, that uh, came into power like five, you know, uh, several days ago, I believe. Last Friday. Where everyone was sending out emails updating the privacy policy, Correct. which you might have seen, and there were maybe some comics and jokes about <laughs> it too. I think I saw a good one of like a Legend of Zelda video where at the end he opens a chest and it's an update to the privacy policy, or maybe right. it was Mario, something yeah. like that. 
It's pretty cute. Everyone was on a time crunch while uh, trying to deliver the GDPR uh, designs and you know pages to the users. So now we're past that point. The deadline is uh, was last week, so everyone was Should supposed to roll it out already. Perfect. And while we're looking at these wireframes, um, we can talk a little bit about today's challenge because it is related to design. Um, while you're in our chat, you can tab over to the challenge tab. And here we're talking about what our challenge is for today, where we want to invite you to share a navigation screen design, a navigation dashboard for a wildlife park mobile application. And so maybe you can start with some wireframes as well, just sketching it out to get the general idea across. Um, we have this beautiful icon set for you to use with a bunch of really cool animals. Um, I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun to put it together. So yeah, you can um, put together some navigation, maybe add some landmarks, maps, and other stuff to flesh out the application a little bit more. But once you're done, um, you want to publish your prototype and then share that link with us using the form. And we'll be um, looking at that later today. Sergio will be looking at it and giving you feedback on your designs. Yes. So please participate. With pleasure. And of course, the prize will be uh, an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. So you want to get on that. And you want to be able to, uh, to get some free software from us. So that'd be really great. Sounds great. Yeah. All right, so let's go back. We've looked at wireframes, and what's the next step in your process? Oh, so the next thing would be uh, creating the uh, digital wireframes. Uh, sometimes people prefer to start with the low fidelity wireframes and then, you know, kind of polish them up until they're high fidelity sort of. Uh, but I usually start with uh, high fidelity, which means that. I try to uh, keep all of the distances, font sizes, uh, everything you know of that type in line with uh, iOS guidelines. So that's what we are going to start with, uh, you know, Great. right now. And are there any kits or tools that you would use to get those guidelines squared away for your wireframes? Yeah, I mean, you can basically uh, browse the web and uh, go to the apple.com website or, you know, Google Material Design. It depends on the platform. So tonight, today we're going to be designing for iOS, which means that we need the Apple guidelines. Great. And we had a question from Samuel, which was answered, but I feel like it might be good for you to go over um, what the definition of a prototype compared to a wireframe is. So a prototype is usually a clickable uh, flow. So a prototype consists of several wireframes. Gotcha. And the purpose of the prototype is to? The purpose of a prototype is to mimic the actual experience as well as understand the uh, transitions and you know basically um, feel the flow, sort of, the UX well, flow. Awesome. That sounds very handy. Yeah, and I know that XD has a published prototype tool to be able to show those more easily with people. So please try that out. It's fun to play around with. Yes, absolutely. And how absolutely. long have you been using XD? Since the very beginning. So I was um, the first designer to be designing in XD. And basically, some of you might know that uh, XD has a demo asset, well, several of them that were made by me uh, exclusively for Adobe, uh, Very cool. which are, you know, Dishi, Sia, Ginchi. So you might know, you know, those names uh, because kind of that's very cool. So you were the first yeah. designer to use XD. That's a sort of yeah. A well, cool I believe that you guys at Adobe were the first. But <laughs> yeah, internally we had it too. But it is right. cool that you were one of the first outside designers to be using XD and yeah. to give us. It was feedback. very, it was very exciting, and yeah, totally. I really like the tool. Awesome, great. Well, let's get into some wireframes. Sure. So uh, let's basically. I don't know if we need to cover that, but you need to create a new file. Um, and we are going to, to start with um, iPhone 10. So you basically select the, you know, the artboard uh, icon and then, yeah, it'll create a new artboard for you. And what I did, I downloaded the iOS assets uh, from here. You will see that if you click on file and then get UI kits, you can download Apple iOS UI kit and it'll open a new page for you and you can choose what you want to download it for so uh, you will basically see it once you open it. I needed to download the 
status bar as well as the bottom bars. So you will see the home indicator here at the bottom. You should be very car careful about the distances and uh, you know all of everything like that because it's not going to change its uh, native experience and uh, you should deal with it. <laughs> Now, so this is the status bar, this is the home indicator at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, when you say that, you mean those are static because of the device that we're designing for. Correct. It's not something that we can change. There's also a question um, from Nikhil about font sizes and how you get those guidelines for certain devices. Yeah, so usually um, they use uh, native fonts, which for iOS is SF Pro or San Francisco, and Pro is an updated version. Uh, and uh, there are two styles, basically uh, SF Pro text as well as SF Pro display. And uh, for all of the font sizes below 20, below 19, including 19, so you should use SF Pro text. And uh, for all the titles, headlines, which are over 20 points or pixels, you should use the display font style. And in terms of font sizes, I'd say that uh, you should rely on your gut, basically, or intuition, but uh, it's good to start with 16 as the body font size, and then you know count up for the titles and the headlines. Always remember about hierarchy of the fonts on the page. It's always important to uh, start with like, basically it's a similar experience to web where you have H1, which is the biggest font size, right? It's the most important title on the page. And then you have H2 and there can be several H2 uh, titles. And then H3, so you know, you kind of, kind of count down depending on the importance of your content as well as the hierarchy, content hierarchy. So I'd say that 16 is a legit font size, as well as uh, you can start with, uh, I don't know, 16 and then count up for the titles. And it might be tough to remember all these different font sizes for all the different elements on the page. So there's a way in XD to save character styles, right, to help you out. So yeah. you can look up all these standards, you can save them as character styles, and then you have it all preset for your document in XD, which is really handy. Totally. Okay, so uh, now that we have the status bar in place, let's just uh, create the top bar and uh, the top bar we usually use for, you know, the titles, right? The page titles. Uh, I don't know if we're going to need them, but for now, let's just keep it. And as you can see, I've set the height to 44. Uh, 45 is al also fine because we're going to have a title, uh, subtle divider to divide this header from the content on the page. And basically, you know, uh, you can just create a divider. For, for such things, they usually use decimals uh, because we now have those beautiful fonts, uh, sorry, fonts with, uh, you know, retina display, which are super high res, which means that we're, we're good to go with like, you know, 0.5 lines and they will be crispy and sharp uh, in design. Uh, as for the, uh, color for the dividers. I usually go with 10% uh, of black, which is also uh, the color code is E5, E5, E5. Uh, some developers might say that uh, they need the color code from you rather than a percentage, like capacity percentage of black. In that case, you can just select E5, E5, E5. So, I mean, uh, in my case, I, that's what I yeah, do. Yeah, that's interesting that you use opacity because, yeah, I usually tend to pick solid colors for the development right. team. So there are a couple different ways you can go about it in the design, but then you need to prep the file to hand it off to developers. Right, yeah. And so it all depends sense. on uh, your requirements, the company's requirements. Uh, yeah, so you oh. should, again, like I said, you should gather all of the stakeholders while you're designing and then basically come to a decision what system, like color codes you're going to be using while well in cool. design. So now we have this top bar. Let's create a title here. Uh, and um, let's for now call it Explore, which is going to be the first page in the app. And um, like I said, uh, let's go with SF Pro Display. Uh, let's make it semi-bold. Um, and then let's make it black. So super simple, for now we're going to be creating the high fidelity wireframes, so yeah. 
Okay, we got a title. Yeah, it's all in place. Now the bottom menu. Let's basically create something here, something that would indicate the bottom menu. And I'm going to make it white for now. One more thing though, you can also use border, uh, sorry, not border, shadow for, um, for, oh, for the divider. You can remove the blur and then make it 10% of black, or again, let's, let's just, to save time, let's just go with E5, 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 100% opacity then. And then let's make it negative. So here it is. Great. We're we having have a lot of good questions in chat. Um, Daniel asked, do you always start with the latest iPhone screen size? Uh, no. Uh, it all depends on the user data. So uh, I'd say that the most popular uh, iPhone size for now globally is iPhone uh, 6, 7, and 8. So 375 by 667. Man, yeah, you know yeah. it off the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you, you know, just uh, for the purpose of making it kind of pretty experience, uh, today we're going to be using the iPhone 10 dimensions. But uh, I'd suggest using iPhone 6, 7, and 8 if you want for the app to look great for the majority of users on iOS. Great. So now we have the section at the bottom, and then um, let's make it let's make it 45 as well. Uh, and now we are going to be creating the first symbol as well as the repeat grid. And here, uh, three seven. So I'm going to be going with five icons on, as was shown on the wireframe, which means that I need to divide three seventy five by five, which is seventy five. So you're doing math as you're doing all these dividing yeah, in different shapes. It basically <laughs> helps me refresh my head as well. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be an icon for now. I will be just using a circle, and let's just use some gray, maybe not that dark. Let's go with AC, AC, AC. Great. And people are mentioning some books that they like. Um, Kevin was wondering as a beginner if you know of any books or resources that you'd recommend to start out. And we did have Nikhil mention The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman is a pretty great book, which I agree with. I like that book a lot. But um, what's your favorite design book, or what should maybe a beginner pick up to get into this world? I'm self-taught, so I can't remember anything from the top of my head for right now, but I really like to kind of absorb the um, uh, different experiences as well as the inspiration from Behance, yeah, as well as be. you know other creative networks uh, where people, uh, and all of them, like most of them are self-taught as well. And I like it because it's kind of refreshing. Uh, however, it's also good to talk to people who have kind of background and educated, uh, are educated in terms of design. So I kind of like to absorb um, experience, uh, in inspiration from the both sides and then, uh, you know, come up with something of my own. Yeah, then you have your own spin and own personality to it. That makes sense. Right. There are a lot of resources available online, though I feel like um, A List Apart is a really great blog that I enjoy reading. It has a lot of great principles and not necessarily design guidelines in terms of what it should look like, but they definitely talk about how you should approach design. So I think that's really great too. Um, James also mentioned Don't Make Me Think by Steve Krug. I love that book as well. I think that's a great uh, book to get into how to think about design from um, a user's perspective. So. Yeah, chat, you're doing a great job. If you have any recommendations, feel free to plug them in the chat to give all your colleagues some books that you like and talk about why you like them, maybe. Yeah, definitely. So here is the first set of elements which are going to be a symbol. And to create a symbol, I use shortcuts, uh, command K, and then I'm going to create a repeat grid, which is command R. And as you can see, uh, here's a repeat grid, and I am going to reduce the distance between the elements to zero. Here is our 
bottom menu. So that was pretty quick. Um, the repeat grid is a really powerful tool Absolutely. in XD. Yeah, it's very unique and I don't know if any other tool has a functionality like that. Yes. Okay. So one more important point where you have to decide regarding, uh, I mean, one, one uh, other important uh, thing to think about is the global padding. For now, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna go with 24, but it usually depends on, uh, you know, the type of content you're going to be uh, providing to the user. So if there's a lot of text or, I don't know, comments or uh, anything like that, it's maybe sometimes it makes sense to, you know, go with the smaller distances on the side so that you would be able to, um, fit a lot of content, but in our case we're going to uh, be going after pretty, which means that we have to make the design uh, breathe, so we, we have to make it airy. Gotcha. Uh, a lot of space. Yep. So uh, I'm just trying to measure uh, things here. Okay, so this is going to be the first image, the promo area uh, where we will be um, promoting some destinations. And since I just came back from Mexico, let's... It's a good place to go with. <laughs> right, let's make it Mexico City. Okay, so again, uh, I'm using semi-bold as well. Uh, just keep in mind that it's usually better to limit the number of font styles, not talking, not saying about the fonts as, uh, themselves, because it's uh, the guidelines uh, Apple, Apple's guidelines as well as the material design guidelines, they advise to use one, fo one font uh, globally in the app. Uh, and then in terms of font styles, it's usually better to limit them so that we have, for instance, regular for body as well as, you know, some uh, small text in the icons and then go with something like semi-bold, for instance, for all of the titles. Yeah, maybe Chuck, you can tell us what your favorite typeface or type style is, because we have two minutes left before I'm going to give away these beautiful socks. So make sure you participate. Um, and today we're making a travel app. So we're working right now on the high fidelity designs in XD. These socks are so cool. I wish I had them. <laughs> I'd wear them with like a skirt and show them off. Cool, all right. So. Um, cool. Uh, since this is going to be an image, uh, let's create a filter over it to separate the image from text. And like I said, this is going to be high fidelity uh, wireframe, which means that ultimately I will just drag and drop images right on the page to distribute them uh, across the future. Um, you know, like basically sections. So let's make it look like a uh, good to go experience for that. In order to create a layer separating Im images from text, we are going to go with this uh, darkening layer, which will go from 0% at top to say 20% at the bottom. We can you know change it later. And for now, I'm, I'm just going to use the half of the height of this uh, element here. One more thing, uh, like one more important thing, when you work with um, uh, user-generated content, which is not the case in this, on this page, but it will be the case for the you know, profile pictures and uh, stuff like that, it's good to remember that some people might upload a wide, uh, you know, an image with wide background, which will blend in with the wide background of your app if you're not going to separate it by border. Hmm. And then there are different practices in terms of border, but I prefer, um, again, opacity. Yep. Which will alt, sorry, not this one. <laughs> which will uh, blend in with the image nicely. And then if you, basically what I mean is, let's create the black border and then set it to 10% opacity and it's going to be uh, set to inner stroke. 
which will blend in with the image. And if it's white, it will nicely separate the image from the white background of the page. Awesome. Well, it's time up for the giveaway. So thank you everyone for participating. A lot of love for Roboto and Open Sans and Bebas, which I think are really great choices. Absolutely. My personal favorite is Helvetica Nue. I actually have a tattoo with Helvetica Nue. Really? <laughs> yeah. And what's your favorite typeface? Um, I kind of like um, different typefaces. I don't have a strong, um, you know, favorite, but... You like to change it up, probably. Right, yeah. yeah. So al almost all of the sans, fonts, um, yeah. Okay, awesome. Great, so we'll announce the winner in just a bit, but we'll continue making this travel app in the meantime. Yep, uh, so now let's create a different type of uh, repeat grid. So as you can see at the, at the top, we are, we've placed the most important piece of information, which in our case is, you know, something that we really want for the users to see uh, first when they land on this page. And then um, let's come up with them something uh, else here. So because, you know, okay, we could do something like this, but Honestly, it would not it would not look super engaging. So let's just maybe uh, separate uh, and uh, you know come up with something more interesting for different sections. Great. Before we jump into that, um, it's time to take a break for the participation. Sure. So we have a winner of the socks. I'm super excited. You better take care of them because I love them already. Thank you for participating. They're beautiful XD socks, which is the software we're designing in. And yeah, socks do make a good first impression on job interviews. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Many purposes for socks here. I feel like guys get more chances to wear socks than women nowadays, mm, but I don't know. maybe I just need to wear them more often and own them. So thank you everyone for participating. There are a lot of people in chat today. All right. And would you like to announce the winner? Uh, so the name of the winner is Brian Walker. Brian, you won these. Congratulations. Congrats, Brian. It kind of matches my shirt actually a little bit with the pattern. It does, it definitely does. <laughs> yeah, I could wear it as a scarf, but no, you get to wear these socks to your next uh, formal event where you want to choose to wear these. So congrats, Brian. Thank you for participating. Great. And don't forget to submit to the challenge. We'll be reviewing that a bit later today. Um, we have a beautiful icon set with lots of animals. So use the skills you learned today from Sergey to participate. Yep. So like I said, yeah, we're continuing, right? <laughs> yep. Um, here is the section number two. And sometimes it's good to align, you know, this uh, photos. So it, well, it's always a good idea, but sometimes you're not able, but if you are, it's great. Uh, in this case, we are almost fine. And if you will add the title above this section, let's name it uh, Popular Destinations. Um, I'm typing in white, so again, black, 16, semi-bold, which means a text because it's below 20. And then as for the distances, I usually go with, um, you know, something like this, like 12, and then a little bit more until the top section so that it's super obvious which section this title belongs to. Uh, in this case, it's popular destinations. Um, you could also add something like see all on the right. It's a very common thing and it might be a good idea for uh, when people need to see them all on one page. And in terms of size, let's use the same one, but let's make it regular. And then once when we polish the UI, we are going to change the color to, you know, the CTA color, the one we're going to go with. Gotcha. 
one more section and we are done with this page. Uh, let's create something again, something different. So this is about the calculations as well. Given that we have uh, the 24 pixels on the right and on the left until the contents, which makes it 48. And I decided to go with 12 pixels for uh, the distance in between the images, which makes it, uh, you know, 48 plus 12, because we, I, I want to go with two images here, basically something like this. It makes it, what, 60? Uh, so it means that 375 minus 6315, let's divide it by 2. That's so cool, you do math right in XD. <laughs> right. <laughs> 150 plus 7, 157, 158, which is probably, I hope I'm right. Correct me if I'm wrong. I usually break out the calculator at this point. I don't like to mess with doing numbers on my Yeah, head. I mean, you can probably do it here as well. So That's true. Yeah, let's try it. 315 divided by 2, yeah, 157. Awesome. So we're going to go with 2, which means that mm, we might go with 13 in between, or we can just make it like 20, um, you know, like 27, on one of, uh, 25 on one of the sides. Not super accurate, but we'll see if it works. Okay, so let's double check the calculations once again. 24. It's uh, 48 plus, yeah, 6, 315, sorry. I'm just uh, speaking out loud, 157. No yeah. It's cool to hear your process while you work. Mm -hmm. That's cool. why we're listening today. All right, so let's do this. Same stuff here, 10% um, of black, inner, and then, come in, uh, again, let's take the name. And as you can see, I've used the title as well as the subtitle on the big card, and then I just used the title in, in the smaller cards. Uh, I did it on purpose because we didn't have the um, privilege of space. And this is a nice way to differentiate the importance of content. Uh, yeah, there's a clear hierarchy going on here. Yeah, and then you can, you know, decide if you want to go like bigger to smaller, or you could just, you know, break uh, bigger and then the medium size with the smaller size, or in this case, you could just go with the icons instead of the photos. Uh, we'll decide later on that. Just uh, make sure that you are super consistent regarding the dis distances everywhere. Yeah, it's no fun there. to be halfway through and notice the spacing's off by like one pixel in one spot. <laughs> right. So maybe something like this would work for the first, first page. And we can change it later. For now, it's just the UX, like the wireframe to visualize the experience. Something and then good. Let's also create the, uh, the active menu element. If it's active, let's make it more vibrant, um, which in our case is going to be black. Higher contrast, right? Yeah. So let's name our uh, sections properly. Hi, Shauna. Thanks for coming. And then... Something like this would work. Now let's copy and paste this on this page and just, you know, super quick wireframing. So this is going to be page number two. If it's 75, it's supposed to be 75 by like horizontally. So this is going to be my trips. And here on this page, we will need two um, subsections. And just to remember that all of the clickable elements, uh, according to the iOS guidelines, are supposed to be at least 45 pixels tall, which, I mean, you can probably sacrifice sometimes, but it all depends on your product. I mean, it's probably very hard. It will be very hard for you to 
keep that uh, font sizes. Uh, like, you know, if you have three or five CTAs on one page, you would still have to uh, come up with a hierarchy. That's interesting. I don't know if you watched the Apple keynote at all yesterday, but I, I heard that they announced that browsers will be able to be browsed on a watch now. Yeah. So the hit size, I have no idea how we're going to make that work on such a Absolutely. small screen. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, the world is getting smaller in all meanings. That's true, yeah, smaller and smaller. And it just takes us several hours to get to, uh, you know, anywhere in the world. So it's the same in design. Mm -hmm. um, Great, so we're creating subsections under my trips. We got upcoming and past trips. Oh, cool. Yeah. So for uh, for the upcoming, let's just maybe kind of indicate that this section is active, which I will indicate with this underline. Uh, one more thing to remember is that uh, when you design uh, an actual app experience, you should always remember about the hit areas. Uh, some designers, you know, basically put the, the text label uh, on the page and then hand it to the devs, and then the devs have to guess mm. what exactly the hit area for this menu element would be. And in terms of icons, for instance, some of them are so, super subtle. Uh, some engineers might make the icon itself uh, clickable oh. without the hit area, which means that you know it will be very hard for you to uh, click it, especially yeah. on desktop. Yeah, that's tough. So a good designer will always communicate to the developer where right. the hit areas are and design it the right way. Or even you know create it like this so that you totally understand when you hover over, uh, it'll end totally understand what is going to be the hit area. Or yeah, you can also uh, kind of name it here in the layers and okay. then combine it with the rest of the elements um, and then group it right so it's one group and then you kind of name it properly yeah that sounds super handy it's preparing your files for handoff yeah nice one more thing uh, we should have on this page i believe it's not necessary at this point but it's good to have it um, we can always remove it but I guess it's a good idea to have search because when it comes to variety of experiences it's probably better for you to be able to search through them gotcha uh, and in order to search for all your favorite cities <laughs> yeah and in order to do that you could create we should create a search icon oh cool so we're gonna create an icon in XD Right, this one is super simple, so we don't need Illustrator, but when it comes to something, you know, more complex, it's usually better to use Illustrator. Yeah, I don't make icons in XD very often, um, but when you're creating a simple shape like this, it's easier to do it in XD. But then if you did create an icon in Illustrator, you could just copy paste it from Illustrator into XD, right? Yeah, super simple and easy and it will maintain all of the layers, everything you need. Again, as you can mm, see here, I created this with the heat area, so let's name it properly, search. And of course, when you create, uh, you know, when you will, will be creating the polished experience, it's usually better to maintain the um, layer structure here so that, you know, we basically uh, label it properly as well as uh, structure it like properly and uh, top to bottom. So usually it's good to uh, structure it the same way as you can see content on the page. So this is the top, uh, let's call it top bar. You know, I'm not going to go super deep into this, but yeah. I think it's good to cover. Um, it's really great, especially when you're working with other designers, you might need to open your file and so they need to know what everything is. And if you haven't labeled any of the layers, it might just say shape layer one, shape layer two, yeah. text layer. So it's a lot harder for people to jump in and take over at Yeah, that point. absolutely. And so, just, you know, think about the engineers yeah. and the time they're going to spend to, you know, understand what you meant here. So it's usually better to label everything properly as well as, like I said, put some structure. You seem organized. Are you pretty organized with all your design files and oh, the way yeah. you work on I'm stuff? Control freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's helped you as a designer to be organized? Um, it mostly helped to the people I work with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. Especially the engineers, but yeah. 
Yeah. It's another way of communicating, right? So you're just clearly communicating your designs. Yep. Uh, so here we're going to use the same style. Let's just ungroup the grid. We don't need it here for now. Uh, and this is going to be same symbol. Um, it will save us time as well. So this let, let's assume that this is the upcoming uh, travel, the up, upcoming trip. And um, probably we have to be able to delete it, right? So here is going to leave an icon which will introduce the additional uh, options. Maybe you, you would like to share it or delete it or anything. For now, let's just make it look like this. Well, I mean, we can, you know, do something like this. Uh, say three dots to indicate more content or more options. Yep. I don't know if you call these the kebab or the more or there's a couple different names for these and Oh, I didn't know about the kebab. Yeah, I've heard it called the kebab because it's three pieces of meat in a line. It's interesting. Yeah, and it's been uh, grouped to me with the hamburger menu. Yeah. So the two of them are the meat menus or meat icons in my mind. But <laughs> yeah, so it can also be known as more. Good to know things. Um, yeah, let's just have it as more for now. Because honestly... It wouldn't make sense to people to open a file and see kebab or hamburger. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think more makes a lot of sense, so we'll go with that for <laughs> sure. And let's make it subtle because it's not the most important piece of uh, content here in this card. This is more important. Mm -hmm. One more thing though is, is that in this app, the uh, people might not finish the trip planning pro so you know they might just uh, kind of uh, drop in the middle so it's better to create a progress bar to indicate that it's not finished or you, some uh, illustrations uh, sorry applications use uh, opacity for that purpose okay so let's just make it look like this for now we will change it later cool and most likely it's going to be the city color it's not going to be that vibrant so this is the upcoming experiences um might be a good idea to sometime well i mean it all depends on content but in this case it might be it might be a good idea to make this background subtle gray the shade of gray to differentiate the top bar from the content on the page. But for now, let's just make it super simple. Again, let's name and label the artboards properly. Uh, nice, my favorite organization. Right. I also noticed when you updated this um, card that you copy pasted from the first page to the second, that progress bar that you added was added to the first page as well. So oh, right. yeah. that's because it's a symbol. And so any of the stylings you add to a symbol that's shared across multiple artboards will be updated, which is pretty yeah. cool. So I should have done this. I, as you can see here, I uh, added an icon over the symbol. So this is how you could just, you know, differentiate the symbols. You could just come up with a variety, use something as base, and then add content on top. Yep, so you can have different styles for the symbols and not affect all of them. Correct. Good gauge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, this is... Um, this is activity. Let's say adding the actual experience for a bit later. Activity is going to be super simple as well. This is where we will go with something like this. So again, super straightforward. In icon, if it's a person or uh, sorry, a profile picture, if it's a person and an icon, if it's a place such as restaurant or, or a hotel. Um, it's, it's good to differentiate, to kind of break text-heavy pages with something visual such as profile pictures or the icons. And in this case, let's imagine that for now I will just go with lorem ipsum, but this is where you as a user will receive all the notifications such as your booking is confirmed or your friend agreed to collaborate on a trip with you. 
Yeah, so let's also add a couple of dividers similar that we did here. One of them could be shadow uh, minus 0.5. And then the other one will, let's just use this one for now. So this is your symbol. And uh, again, the repeat grid. Great, very quick workflow. Yeah. Glenna, congrats on getting your stickers. I'm glad you got them all right. Yeah, it was mentioned that um, I actually was the guest last week for 3D illustration, um, which was a lot of fun. It's fun being in the other seat, though, and helping to host. I'm learning new things along the way, too, which is always handy. Mm -hmm. OK, this is the activity. Uh, it's, so it's supposed to be 75 until the right edge, because each uh, section at the, in the bottom menu is 75. Uh, let's name it activity. And then let's go to the last page. We will take care of the layers later. This is the account page. So a lot of apps don't pay a lot of attention to the account page, and they focus mostly on the core experience. But I guess it's nice uh, to have uh, like a visual account page so that people could open this page and then, uh, you know, basically, I don't know, upgrade if your app is, uh, has, uh, I don't know, in-app purchase. Uh, or subscriptions. Or subscription so. or, you know, even sign in, sign up, because you can trade some perks in order to, for the people to do so. So this is going to be the profile picture. I also feel like the settings page is not a page you normally want to go to as a user. So if you make it visually appealing and fun and easy to use, exactly, you'll have more control over the app and be happier with your experience. So it's good to spend time on it. Yeah, so just use it as, your, uh, as a benefit because it can have some content which might be very essential to, to the user. And yeah. you could you know, use that. Uh, let's call it, add, let's add some additional information here, something that is su not super important, but still. You can help visualize the page. We have a good question from Uzi, um, who asks, is it okay to both put horizontal scrolling elements and tabs on the same page when it comes to UX and usability? It depends on the flow in general. So for instance, a lot of apps use, uh, like for instance, Tinder, uh, they use horizontal swiping and you can swipe through sections or Instagram. And then if there is more uh, sections on, you know, like more tabs, it would still be scrolling through them so that it's all consistent experience uh, in general. It all depends on your prototype. You should feel it. You should uh, create a prototype and see if it works well. You will understand it as a user. You should judge from the user perspective. Yeah, I think all these different interactions make sense on a mobile device, especially since the real estate is so small. You don't exactly. have a lot of room to work with, so you got to figure out creative ways to let people move around the application in a way that makes sense. But I completely agree, prototyping is always the way to go to feel it out. Yeah, it should ju sh just uh, trust your gut, and then again, you could uh, talk to your uh, colleagues and peers. Maybe do some gorilla usability testing, take it out into the street and have people try it out, yeah. see what they say. <laughs> That's also a good idea. Or you can use, you know, there is there is plenty of websites that provide user testing, so you could definitely use them yeah. as well. That's true. Okay, so su super subtle. We don't really need for it to be very vibrant. Um, what do people usually put here? Let's say my account f would go first. Since the padding is 24, let's make it 24. Let's make it um, maybe 16 is nice size. 
So yeah, we can change the styles later. For now, let's just create one more symbol and the repeat grid. On the right, we will go with the chevron. I call it chevron, people. Not everyone. <laughs> Again, it's kind of your own name for these icons sometimes, right? Because it could be diamond, yeah. chevron, or... Yeah, or an arrow, so arrow, yeah. it's all your call. Kebab. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't forget about the heat area. Yeah. Let's go with 44 for all of the icons of this type. Uh, and you can make it transparent. Uh, we will change this later. Uh, okay, so this is the symbol and then this is the repeat grid. Uh, so quick. Yeah. XG is such a powerful tool because of this cool functionality. And then let's make it a little bit lighter because this is where the focus is supposed to be. My account settings, um, notifications about, let's create two more, um, which are going to be for now, privacy policy, again, GDPR. <laughs> yeah, gotta Super make sure you important. have it in. Terms and conditions. Cool, so. It's looking good. Yeah, and we will, we will polish it, of course, for now. Let's go with this for the main menu pages. Great, and uh, we also have a question from Nayan about the asset section or the assets panel. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Sure, this is basically, if you click on the, in the lower uh, left-hand corner, if you click on this icon with two circles, it's called uh, assets. You will see all of the assets that you have in the app. Uh, once you create the colors, you know, they will appear here and then the character styles as well. So we are going to be covering this probably tomorrow, but uh, yeah, uh, this is where it is. This is where you can easily search through the assets, so everything that you have will be here. It's very handy. And that's Absolute where your, one. yeah, like colors, character styles, all that stuff will live. Cool, all right, so let's focus on the core experience. It shouldn't take long. So by the core experience, I mean this part where you will be able to add a trip um, and probably the first thing to uh, ask is where are we going? <laughs> where are we going today? Right. Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, let's decide together. Mm -hmm. um, I usually prefer to expose the native keyboard right away when you have a text input. So in this case, let's expose it because, you know, it will save us one click. You should always count the clicks when it comes to, I mean, the user clicks when it comes to such things. Uh, just imagine if you created this and it didn't have the keyboard expo exposed, the user would, be, uh, would have to click once in order to the keyboard to appear. So it's usually not considered not the best experience. Um, and let's just, yeah, show it right away. Yeah, I think that's super helpful. It's also great to see the keyboard in context to see how much space it'll take up on the screen. Absolutely. All good advice. Okay, so I usually like to remove all of the unnecessary elements. I mean, some people might argue that it doesn't look like a text input, but in our case, this um, you know this bar here will be fading in, fading out. Uh, basically, a visual indicator to let you know that that is an input correct. field. Yeah. Awesome. And then we might uh, consider adding a multi-city. Um, you know, basically. Going to lots of places. Right. <laughs> I like that. I like traveling to multiple cities. 
Yeah, so, you know, this app is supposed to give you a variety of options because it's going to be the best travel planner. Yep, best travel planner <laughs> app ever. The only one I'll ever need. And then I can plan all my trips all over to Europe, Japan. All in one place. Netherlands, all the beautiful places chat wants to go. Yep. Or has been. Cool. So now that we have this um, here, we might want to show what the um, uh, font style in the input could look like. Mm -hmm. So let's name it Paris. Paris. Wonderful. We're going so. to Paris. <laughs> yeah, and just as a reminder, we have 30 minutes left for the challenge. So please submit your challenge. We want to take a look at what you can create with these beautiful icons. Yes. Okay, so this is Paris. Um, let's also use the clear icon so that people could easily delete the text they're not happy with for some reason. This is going to be the icon for now. I'm not, um, I'm not going to create anything. Well, actually, I probably need something. Well, X. Yeah. X is another really easy icon that we can create in XD because it's just two lines crossing. Yeah. Oops. Cool. And again, we can change it later. Just mentioned that uh, I'm, you know, kind of following the same distances on both sides everywhere globally in the app. It's very important. Consistency is super important. So just be consistent when you design. Uh, okay, so this is... Uh, Ends up being a lot of math. Yeah. They told me I wasn't going to use math if I went to art school, but they lied. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They definitely did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is what the user will see. This screen here is the user will see once they click on add. So we have to have an icon that would indicate that, you know, you need to, if you, if you want, you could close this screen, which is going to be canceled for now. And then most likely you will need next. Okay. Um, for now, let's, go, let's make it look like this. But uh, ideally, it's usually better to differentiate these two. So one of them would uh, be a text link, and the other one would be an icon, gotcha. uh, so that people you know, understand the difference. And you can decide on your own which one is going to be an icon and which one is going to be a text link. Which one gets the icon treatment? Which one gets the text link treatment? Right. It all depends on the importance. Uh, for you. In this case, we probably want for the users, to, we want to embrace the users to create content because if they create content in the app, they're going to come back, which is very good for us and uh, for the retention rate as, yeah. as well. Retention is very critical in mobile applications. Yep. Uh, so let's just go to Paris. <laughs> to Paris, absolutely. <laughs> I'm excited. There was uh, mention of the catacombs. I forgot the catacombs are in Paris. That'd be fun to visit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we will use the same kind of icon we created here, but let's just make it reverse it and then put it at the top. Um, this is how I, I do it for now, but we will see. So uh, the idea is to align the left tip of the icon with the left edge of the future text on the page. And as you can see, now it's a back icon. However, it was canceled uh, on the previous screen in the flow. Uh, the next one would be uh, select dates. And this is where we would have to create a calendar. Um, let's just create a calendar, ca calendar really quick. Mm. Create a calendar really quick. I'm excited. 
Um, I don't know if it's going to be quick because there's so many <laughs> <laughs> elements, but we'll see. Okay, so let's do some math again. We have um, we have 327. Let's divide it by seven. 46, around 46 is fine. We can compromise a little bit, um, and then. 44. So Spencer asked about how we're mapping the pathways for the u user experience, the UX. Um, we reviewed uh, drawn wireframes before jumping into XD. So everything was sketched out beforehand and figured out, and now we're uh, doing high fidelity screens of those initial wireframes. That's exactly what we're doing. OK, this is the repeat grid. Uh, let's call it Monday. <laughs> Since everyone's <laughs> calling it Monday. Case the Mondays. <laughs> Tuesday. And as you can see, I'm using the two letters for each day. You should always uh, check with uh, internet, with the internet as well as your UX uh, writer in terms of proper uh, formats like content formats, so for instance, date formats or, you know, how to properly name uh, certain things in the app. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the repeat grid number one, and I believe that this uh, section here will snap to the top uh, while the days will change. So, you know, the content will be scrollable and uh, Days will be not regular. Uh, sorry, it's supposed to be text as well as here. Okay. Uh, Hi, David. Welcome to chat. We're going through a travel app design. Yeah. Um, so same here, and then kind of like this. This is very cool, by the way. I really like that the repeat grid allows you to um, not only like distribute content horizontally, but vertically as well. Yeah, it just repeats it in all the directions. Yeah. It's so handy. Especially for when you create a calendar. It's the perfect tool for the calendar. You did actually do this very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. OK, so I'm just, again, counting this. Yeah. Welcome back, Alyssa. She was in your seat a couple weeks ago. She says, oh, uh, cool. you're going to kill it. <laughs> He's doing a good job so far, so thank you. Uh, 10, yeah, 11, let's count together. <laughs> 13, 14, 15, oh, we already had 15, 16. Yep, it's lots of numbers in design. You don't think about it until you start putting together everything. But yeah. the other thing you gotta pay attention to is all the copy, the writing inside of the designs. I know that I have to deal with uh, updating that a lot of the time, which can be pretty oh. time consuming. Absolutely. So just create a couple more, and that's it. 29. How many days are we doing in this one? 30? Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> let's do 30, and then just cover the unnecessary part for now. OK, here we go. Great. Um, let's call it um, June. June sounds good. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's June now, so perfect. June. It's a good month to travel. I feel like it'd be a good month for Paris. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's summertime. Yeah. Um, Don't want to go in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, again, well, yeah. I mean, I guess ideally it would make sense to include the title uh, in the repeat grid, but uh, just to make it quicker, let's just 
for an hour created like this. Cool. June and July, my favorite months to travel. Yeah. Depending on where you're going, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then August. Um, so we're just repeating elements. It's super easy to make things repeat, expand, to fill the space. We did this in yeah. just a couple minutes. Super. So uh, let's just select some dates. Um, maybe something like this would work. Let's just do round the corners and then align it a little bit better. Like this. This is where the selected uh, dates are going to leave. So, yeah. And then this part here, too. Great, we're going at the end of June. Mm, yep. <laughs> Hi, Dario. Okay, so. Let's add this beneath. Okay. Let's remove the white background from the from repeat grid and then add something here. Okay, so this is going to be the selected numbers so we can change the um, color as well as the font size to something more vibrant since this is selected this is where the focus is supposed to be so uh, 17 18 19 20 21 and then a couple more days next yep. week um, Man, we're leaving soon. We gotta start packing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> gotta bring some watercolors so we can go paint. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Beautiful. So once you have selected the dates, you can hit next, and next is going to be the flights. And uh, when it comes to flights, it's usually good to start with the departing. Flight, so mm, departing flight uh, here. Uh, let's just go with the cards. Uh, each card will have uh, some information about the flight. Uh, so let's see. Twenty four plus eight. Okay, and then we'll go with six for the rounded corners, and then keep in mind the distances. Let's go with the even distances. So here in this card, I will use both the shadow as well as the border. Let's make the border super thin. Nice and crisp because of all the resolution abilities of all the new phones. Yeah. And it's, as you can see, it basically follows the material design guidelines, which... Uh, do you like material design? Yes, I do. Sometimes it's very handy, especially when it comes to cards. I think that cards, you know, indicate clickability, which is good. Uh, some people might argue, you know, when you come with like dividers, for instance, when you create a dividers and then basically place content and then separate it with a divider, some people might say, hey, it's not clickable enough. Uh, this is where the cards come in hand and you can use them. And then obviously people are used already to the cards and the fact that they are clickable. Yeah. So it will be... Uh, Easy in terms of usability. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I see cards everywhere. I love material design when it came out. They recently made some really cool updates, I think. Um, the guidelines are all very clear. It's easy to follow. Yeah, and like they it. just came up with um, um, 
you know, different styles of icons. Yeah. So you can use solid icons or outlined icons, all depends on you. What you want to do, yeah. Very cool stuff. And that's by Google. Google Material Design is their design language, which they use in all their applications. Yeah. So this card, each card uh, here on this page will have the info about uh, the airports as well as the time. So the most important uh, information for the user to be able to make a decision uh, to click on the card. So in our case, uh, I consider the times as well as the uh, you know, the airports and some additional information about uh, the flight. So I think that it's very important to uh, give people an understanding of what mm, their experience is going to be. Plus nine by half. So let's say it's a non-stop flight and then let's use a text bullet. Um, Okay. I do it, you know, like this to save time. <laughs> All depends on your internet connection, but uh, yes, so. sometimes the symbols you don't know what the key code is or how yeah. to get it up. So I do the same thing. I'll Google it and then copy paste that code from the browser. Absolutely, yeah. So as you can see, I've added uh, another date, date kind of time format. Uh, we usually use in design something like this, very short to save a real estate, uh, you know, space on your page. Uh, you should always, like I said, uh, check up with the UX person. And one more major point where the user would be making a decision is the price. So let's make it cheap. Yeah. Comparab <laughs> comparably cheap. Seven hundred dollars is pretty affordable. We got yeah. some people mentioning what time it is and their uh, where they are right now, and a lot of people are viewing pretty late, like 10.46 p.m., 19.45, sorry, 19.15 and 18.17. So the, what is that called, the time where it's the 24-hour clock? European. European, yeah. Probably. I always have a hard time converting that, but it feels late. 19 feels late, 18 feels late. Mm, 19 is 7, so. Okay. Not that late. Okay, well, a little bit late, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here uh, we are most likely we're not going to go with next because this uh, one of the, you know one of the cards is going to be uh, the CTA. So once you click here, uh, most likely it will expand and it will expose all of the content right on this page, or it could mimic that experience but still show another page. So it all depends on mm -hmm. the animation. It could just you know sli nicely slide or expose itself, and then once you hit OK or you know, you can make a CTA contain the price. Once you uh, tap it, it will bring you to the next page, which is going to be uh, returning flight. And how are we getting home? Yeah. <laughs> and the returning flight is going to be pretty much the same design. It's very important, like I said, to follow you know, consistency. So if you've come up with a certain uh, way to uh, visualize, you know, some content, you should always remember that it's better to follow the same approach everywhere on different pages. Because if you make it look different, people are going to be questioning themselves. Why is it different? Does it mean something different? You know, is it made for purpose? So it's usually better to keep it consistent. Mm -hmm. Let's call it the next page, uh, hotel. Time to pick our hotel. And just as a reminder, there's about 10 minutes left to submit your, um, your animal navigation dashboard. So please submit some designs. We're looking forward to looking those over. And don't forget that you'll win a free Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, so it's definitely worth it to participate. You can use all the skills that uh, you've learned today in this stream. Ooh. Great, so for the hotels, I noticed that you're doing the image cards again. Yeah, um, when it comes to the flights, we probably don't need any images. I mean, if it looks uh, text heavy and you think that, you know, it's not super engaging, 
Uh, we might add the airlines logos on the page uh, on the left to indicate the content even better. So, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of people understand the logos. They recognize them when they see them. And some people have their favorites in terms of airlines. So it's better to, like, you know, place it on the page so that people would be able to, you know, make a decision. Super Based on what airline they like and things like that. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to the hotels, it's usually better to go with pictures because uh, except for the hotel name as well as the some description or, you know, instead of description, we could go with something like rating, right? So yeah. say 4.7 out of 5, uh, I don't know, based on 1,234 reviews or ratings, right? Yeah, that's a really key piece of information, I feel like, the ratings. Yeah, it just helps you uh, as a user understand if it's a nice hotel for you, especially if you're new. Or don't know the area, yeah. Yeah, to the area. So the number of stars is another key point. Uh, what I will use here as a, as a star for now is going to be a circle. Uh, like a tiny circle, let's create a repeat grid here as well, of consisting of five circles for now. And let's make them sit close to each other, and then one more repeat grid over it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's not super precise, but I really like that, that effect works, yeah. that we can use same layout for all the cards, and then add additional elements on top. Uh, one more thing is the price, right? You have to uh, see it right away without clicking on the card. Uh, let's put it here. And then again, make it a repeat read. Such a powerful tool. Yeah, everyone has his own favorite, uh, you know, ways to do, to design. So I like kind of, you know, several layers on top of each other and then the base would remain the same. It saves time and especially when you change something somewhere and then you forget about it on the next screen. In this case, you don't have to worry about it. You can just basically easily select whatever you want. So uh, in terms of the CTA on this page, we'll probably don't need next because once the people, you know, click on the on a card, it will expand and it will show more information because obviously people need more information when it comes to a hotel. They need, you know, the room details, stuff like that. And, you know, the location as well is very important. So most likely people are going to be clicking on the cards in order to read more, which means that probably placing next on this screen is too soon. Okay, so hotel is next. Uh, one more thing that probably makes sense to add on the screens is the um, uh, is the top menu like you know tabs because you have to easily uh, you have to be able to easily um, sort or filter content especially when it comes to you know hundreds of airline tickets or hotels I usually start with uh, all as the first tab uh, sometimes it's not it doesn't fit but in this case it should or sorry not not in this case uh, when it comes to hotels it should but in this case probably we can we should be able to sort by price or um, I don't know, duration. That's important too. You don't want to be at a layover for so 12 important. hours. So stops is a very important yeah. um, thing to keep in mind while you select an airline ticket. Um, you know, kind of like that. For now, I will just put lorem ipsum. And as you can see here, I've used, I kind of cut one of the labels by the right edge of the screen which will help the user understand that this is scrollable or swipeable. Awesome, so you can scroll to see more of the options for navigation or for filtering in this exactly. case. Exactly. So this is going to be the filters. Here. Hi Paula. Hi Camillo. Thanks for joining us. Hi Jose. 
let's use same filters here as well 157 vertically and then add the well actually you know what let's create a symbol command k Make and then easy. command c command v we mm -hmm. just pasted a symbol on this page though we are going to come up with different labels so I mean let's say something like um, stars location I don't know I'm just coming up with the labels um, let's sort them by price mm -hmm. and then lower mipsum as well I'll come up with something later okay so cool don't forget about the home indicator at the bottom because we're designing for iPhone 10 so it's usually good to keep it in mind so hotel once you're done with the hotel you can uh, add kind of things to do which in our case are going to be the you know like restaurants um, yeah or museums and here all will fit well so I'm just trying to make it even on the left here and on the right here probably like this would work so all restaurants museums um, what else I don't know outdoor indoor anything again depend on it depends on your and on the user data if you don't have user data just um, you know rely on your gut as well it's supposed to work <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is where we will uh, place the restaurant name Tor Toro Grill for instance uh, I don't know I'm just making it up uh, and most likely we will not know the prices at this point uh, so since it's the add-ons we might want to add a small plus to indicate that you can add this to your card gotcha maybe we should add the catacombs <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Only so. have two minutes left to submit your um, different XD prototypes, so please make sure you get those in so we can take a peek cool. at them. Again, just a tiny X. And then uh, let's make it two pixels similar to everywhere else. And then create one more line. Ta -da. Awesome, we got a plus icon. Yep, so again, one more repeat breed. We can move it over the content. Uh, something like this. Not super high fidelity, but <laughs> we'll polish it. Um, and then let's use the same language for the selected state. Say we've selected the second card. Um, okay. This is going to be the check mark. So something like this. I'm drawing all the icons today. Nice. And we will polish them. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's cool. I like the hand drawn ones. It gives them a bit more of a style. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you are on time crunch or if you want to follow the uh, Google Material Design uh, guidelines, you can definitely download them from, you know, Google site instead of creating them. But if you are after something more exclusive, I would suggest drawing them in both XD or Illustrator. It depends on the complexity of an icon. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so this is where we're going to need the next since the users might want to select not just one but you know several things to do uh, maybe a restaurant or 
you know, the Louvre. The Louvre. The Louvre Museum. You know, something like that. Super simple for now. Um, Great. This might be a good time to just uh, take a little bit of a break. We're about to look over the submissions. So thank you everyone for participating. Um, yeah, we have a lot of submissions. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed going through uh, the visual design today and we'll be back at it tomorrow and the next day. But for now we'll take a break and look over these wonderful challenge submissions. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple. I'm gonna start here. We have this beautiful, cute little dashboard by Nikhil. Um, so we have all the different icons. We have the navigation dashboard. Looks like we have a couple different colors to the backgrounds and the icons, which I like. And uh, this is designed for Android, and clearly the designer wanted to follow the um, guidelines, the material design guidelines, yeah. which I really like. I also like that, uh, you know, the grid in general is kind of fun. It's not, you know, it's not like, like I said in the beginning, it's not a card below a card. It's a more interesting way to expose content. And yeah, the icons are pretty cool, by the way. I really like the lion and the dog as well. <laughs> I like the contrast of it. You can really see the icons and since it's larger, it gives it more of a showcasey feel. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have a second page, so let's go to that. Um, yeah, That's let's, cute. let's see, if I click on dogs, it brings me to the dog section. You can't <laughs> lose with an image of a puppy. I know, right? It's, it's so like emotional cheating. and very attaching, yeah. His face, too, he looks super sad and cute. Um, his description is adorable and funny, so we know he's funny, too. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, just a tiny bit of criticism. So uh, if you can see the title overview, I would probably move it down a little bit to match the padding on the left. You know, so basically the distance on the left until the edge of the white card at the bottom and the top part of it should probably match just a little bit. But I really like the layout and I, I like the fact that, you know, the card has this shadow around it and yeah. it just tops the image. Yeah. which adds this depth effect. There's a lot of different layers here. The bottom navigation is on top of that card, which is on top of the background image. Yeah. I see that we also have a lot of icons, um, which are great. Awesome, yeah. They help break the text heavy, you know, not fun experiences. Great, awesome job, Nikhil. Next we have Matthew Brown. This is his navigation dashboard. We got a map going on, different animals. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about when I said that, the, again, the um, uh, content on the page is supposed to look differently, right? So again, imagine if it was like the same cards at the top and then the map. What I would remove here is the image from the background in the upper section beneath the images. We already have the accents, which are the images themselves. Probably don't need to add something else. Let's just focus on the images because they are the core of each app in this case. Yeah, I like the icons being used. It's a little bit hard to see them on top of the images, but I like the use of imagery. I think that's really great. Yeah. We also have the navigation on the bottom using, it looks like iOS standards with recents and browse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see the inspiration of watching the stream today for this design layout. I like it. Awesome. Thanks, Matthew. Next, we have Christy Nicola. Oh, very nice. Yeah, this is super cute. We have a lot going on here. It looks like it is a map with icons on top of it. So it looks for, to me it looks like a game experience sort of. Maybe it is, right? So if you click somewhere, it just uh, shows you some animation, something cool, and then you can get to another page. From the um, uh, product perspective, I believe that most likely people might get confused a little bit because, I mean, there is a call to action, which is you are here, but what does it mean? Probably. You know, it kind of to me as a user, it lacks that onboarding. But if uh, let's assume that I know what this app is about, so yeah. I really like the visual style. Yeah, it's interesting. We have the navigation bar on the top too. It looks like there's a notification icon, a back arrow. Navigation has a buffalo icon. Very cool. The bottom has it looks like search, a duck, and a bird. <laughs> oh, nice. And then, um, oh, it looks like we can click on a couple different things here. I know that we have a couple different pages, so oh, cool. let's do the dog. It looks like the dog is clickable. If we click on the dog, oh, okay. you see a cute little so, pop-up. So you can track a dog? Yeah, it looks like you can track zero. 
That's good, you know, especially if you've unleashed your favorite baby, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to be able to track that dog, get it home. Poor Zero. Looks like it has information about Zero, how many years old it is. I think this is clickable too. I'm going to try clicking it. Oh, oh, oh okay, now I got it. Nice. It's, it's nice, yeah. So it, it took us two clicks, right, two taps to realize what this app is about. It's not bad at all, especially given the nature of this app, right? It's not super straightforward, sort of. It's yeah. new, it's unique, so, you know, it's kind of fun. I like it. It lets you know that you can click on different animals via the icons. It'll give you information about it, and then it'll tell you how to get there. Yeah, and, and then just the tiny advice as well. So as you can see, the pets in the bubbles, they might a little bit com compete with the trees. So if uh, given that they are kind mm. of the same... Um, same color. Same, same color, yeah, same shape, same size, sort of. Some people might think that the trees are clickable as well. And I mean, if you want for it, uh, for the users to be able to track the trees, <laughs> yeah. it might Maybe work. you do. Maybe you're an arborist and you want to know which trees are in the park and how old they are. Right. <laughs> and how far you're from them. Yeah. That'd be really cool with some big trees in the park. Very unique. This is really cool. I'm wondering if she created all these different shapes in XD. Cool. Thank you, Christy. Next, we have Rachid. And so we have a couple different things going on. We got the ratings. We got the number of the animal. Uh, we have a park map in the background. Um, it's interesting. I think that um, what it lacks in terms of uh, content is the consistency because uh, as you can see the first title is all caps uh, the second and the third titles are uh, you know title case so it's be it's usually better to follow same logic everywhere uh, unless the name of the first uh, attraction is you know is usually written in all caps yeah so we have a couple different things going on. It looks like we can click on oh, the okay. button down here for get details. So let's try that. Oh, interesting. Nice. So we've clicked on get details for Croco Park, which is the first card here. And it's brought us to a map view with directions and yeah. some information about it. Super useful. And you can use the Google Maps. You can, you know, uh, usually it's a good idea to add an icon over the map to expand it so that user could use the um, you know full width and height of uh, their phones to navigate through the map yeah there's a lot going on here it's really nice lots of information good cool. use of the icons thank you Rachid. next we have robin sonoff i believe that's how you pronounce it sorry if i mispronounced it and this is really cool this is like a drawn map that we can see here and the text is a little bit small but it says elephant zone and it looks like we've clicked on the elephant oh, icon there. So it's a zoo or a park, probably, right? Yeah, yeah. It looks like looks like it. And you can you are, um, you know, judging by the city in the lower left corner, which is also following the Google Material Design guidelines. I could say that you know again, you can just easily get to a certain area where a certain animal lives, or. Yeah, so it looks like we can click on um, one of these things. Let me try to figure out what that is. Um, maybe it's the search. It looks like the search is clickable, yeah. so I'll click on that. Oh, okay. Oh. Let me try refreshing the page. I don't know what's happening here. Let's try to go back. Maybe maybe it's uh, it's the middle of the of an animation effect, you know, so that kind of the screen fills itself. Oh, with maybe yeah. Background and content. Yeah, um, it looks like it's a shape that's being masked out, and yeah. then we get a menu of some sort. And again, uh, if it comes to the icons which are not super straightforward. It's usually better to add labels, uh, tiny labels under them, so that people don't get confused and can easily understand what each icon is about. Yeah, we have one more screen. So it looks like the last screen is focused on this elephant. Mm -hmm. Probably if you zoom in, you could just see closer. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're still working on this, but it looks like the icons and maps are really cute. If we go back to the main page, um, yeah, there's the go button, which you can click on that brings you to that last page where you zoom in on the elephant. 
So there's a couple different interactions going on where we're trying to get to the elephant zone, it looks like. Yeah. But I like the gradients in the backgrounds, the icons it looks like even has some gradients applied to them. I like that you drew a whole map for the whole park. You basically designed a park for this. That's true. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Yeah. Great. Um, and then I also have this uh, wildlife park by Prince. Nice, yeah. Uh, so I like the um, uh, the fact that the designer used both uh, photographs as well as icons on this page. Yeah. It helps uh, understand the you know basically the hierarchy on the page. Obviously, the photographs will get more tabs rather than icons, but still the icons are you know very useful, and uh, I believe they're in line with the guidelines. So, as I can see from this point there supposedly like 44, 45 pixels wide and tall. Yeah, they follow the guidelines for accessibility for being able to click on them. Yeah. Looks like we have Explore with a couple different things on the top. We have a section for new members, all members. We have a couple different pages, so let's see what's clickable. We can click on this deer illustration at the top, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Nice, Moana. It's oh, like interesting. So the designer used two colors for the CTAs. It's a very popular, uh, you know, pattern, uh, especially for when you have, I, I don't know, like say free experience and the premium experience. Uh, some designers, as well as the product managers, prefer to come up with two colors so that people understand right away which is free, which is premium. Um, in this case, I don't necessarily understand which color is more. Uh, vibrant and more important from the product management perspective but you know from the user perspective as well but yeah it's a nice uh, practice yeah I like the contrast between the two colors too the yellow and purple are definitely very different in the style we have one more page here I'm gonna try to go back to the main page to click on this butterfly it looks like is clickable so cool oh that's neat um, uh, I mean, the grid is very straightforward. What I would suggest adding is the labels, you know, so yeah. that it, this content feels educational. So I believe that it needs some text labels to, you know, Give understand. Yeah, to understand what the names of these butterflies are. I'm pretty sure Prince used the repeat grid to create this, though. So yeah. good job using that. And then if you click and drag and drop, some images from your computer, it'll populate the Super whole repeat simple. grid with all your images. So if that's the technique you used, good job doing it because it looks really nice really quickly. And one more uh, point of feedback. So uh, when you come up with the font size for the titles, just remember that some words can be longer and sometimes you just need two words as a title. In this case, probably it would be, you know, the title would be broken down into two lines, which I'm not sure is the designer would be happy with. So, you know, just wait in, uh, understand your app, and then decide on the font sizes for the titles. Yeah, overall, I think this is really great. I like I the agree. icons, I like the imagery, I like that you can indicate the scrolling on the main page. So good job, Prince. We have a couple more um, that I need to pull up, so I'm just gonna take a second to do that. Sure. Yeah, and while I do that, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, some advice based on what you've seen. Um, I like that uh, you guys don't, uh, you're not afraid to uh, explore. Uh, I like that uh, junior designers, they sometimes come up with very interesting color palettes as well as the UI patterns. Uh, in this case, there was a couple of them, and then intuitively, just based on the you know previous experiences and uh, you know stuff they seen uh, before, they come up with uh, patterns that are very uh, common nowadays. For instance, the dual colors for the CTAs, uh, like in one of the designs we just saw. Okay, so the first one I'm going to try again is 
I reloaded this application that was having a little bit of trouble. I noticed in chat he asked us to refresh it. Okay, so the second page no longer has that shape going on. Oh, okay. We have a menu here to explore different animals. We can click on them, it looks like. And it looks like a card. So basically, if you swipe up, it just basically uh, repeats, right? And just goes up. Great. And then the last one is that zoomed in view again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got to see that one fixed, which is great. Next, we have Chandra's Wildlife Park. This is a cool welcome screen. Oh, interesting. So every other row is uh, same color, but there are two of them. Uh, I have never seen anything like that. So, you know, it depends on if you wanted to do it intentionally or uh, if you just wanted to explore the different colors. I really like the exploration. One thing I'm not sure about is if you wanted to make the first row more important than second and you know third more important than fourth because first one and the third one are more vibrant. I would see as a user I would see that they're more important. Kind of looks like a background image. We have a couple different pages on this prototype, oh, okay. so let's click on start to see what happens. Okay. So now we have a map view and we have the icons on the map. That's pretty cool. Um, and it looks like I can click on search. And then we have the icons in this style mm. treatment for when you actually want to click on them. Very nice. I've seen that lion somewhere. <laughs> I've seen that lion before. Yeah. And it looks like elephant is a popular choice. We can click on the elephant icon. Oh, nice. And it highlights before we click find. OK, and then it gives you, it looks like, directions to find that elephant on the map. Yeah. And if we hit navigate, Oh, wow, we even get navigation directions to walk up to the elephant. Very cool. Cool, there's one more screen. I'm going to have to click next because I don't know if I can get to it from here. OK, so we have some information about the elephant, which is pretty Asian handy. elephants. Asian elephants, nice. They're usually smaller, right? I think they're the smaller ones, yeah. I'm not sure, though. I'm not an <laughs> elephant expert, but yeah, they look like they could be a little bit smaller. Cool. So there are a lot of different pages going on here. Good job, Chandra. This looks really nice. I thought those were the clickable icons. So. It's just the background image, it looks okay. like. The start screen, yeah. Great. This is Madhavan. So this is Madhavan's uh, wildlife park. Looks like we have a video on the home screen. That looks cool. That's nice. So the video is supposed to take full screen probably, or at least cover the page. Um, I have a question regarding the title. Um, if it's clickable, I'm fine with it. If it's not, uh, probably, mm, you know, probably better to use another color because I see that the clickable elements, which are obviously the search icon as well as notifications, uh, they're green. Oh, that, yeah, that color, the blue color. Um, but I like how clean this layout is. It's clean, yeah. It doesn't look like the title is clickable. We have navigation down on the bottom as well. Um, it looks like we can click on the search, so I'm going to click on the search. Mm -hmm. Cool, so we can start typing in some stuff. From the UX perspective, uh, it's usually better to give the user some options because, uh, believe it or not, some people don't know what they want to search yeah. when they click on search, so it's better to give them an idea what you can, you know, showed them. Yeah, but it looks like he imitated your advice of having the um, keyboard appear when right you have an place. input field, which Perfect. I like a lot. Yeah. Great. So I don't know if I missed a screen. Let's go one more. OK, great. So it looks like you can get to the screen as well where you can rate the app. That's awesome. That's very important. I know that uh, Apple is changing the rate experience, um, you know, very f like frequently and uh, this could be the beginning of it. It could just, you know, after the user click on four or five stars, you could just show the native pop-up, uh, which would lead on the App Store for the user to be able to provide, you know. Some feedback. Some feedback. Yeah, I like it. I like the green stars. It matches the rest of the UI, too. Yeah. Thanks, Madhavan. And the last one is by Enrique, who submitted it to his Behance page. Um, so we have a couple different screens here. Oh, nice. Okay, it does look like um, you're in the middle of your process since the icons are not uh, established at the bottom, but 
I like that you are using a very interesting, like, you know, interesting, more interesting experience than just having cards below each other. So in this case, we understand that the first two are more important than the, the ones in the last row. Yep, the wolf and the wildcat are more prominent. Maybe there are more of them. Um, it looks like we can click on the Mexican wolf to get the second screen. Okay. One more thing to keep in mind is that when it comes to a lot of text, it's usually uh, better to place it on white background rather than black background because uh, for a lot of people it's just uh, harder to read white against black than other ways. Yeah. Okay, so those are the two screens. Thank but you. But it's pretty vi vibrant. Yeah, so do any speak out to you? Are there any that stand out and you like a lot? I like the one with the map. Um, the, the previous one. This one is see. nice too. There's a map that appeared on a couple of them. Yeah. Puppy. This one is nice. There was another map with the um, Christmas trees. Yeah, there was. I might have accidentally closed that, so give me one second to pull it back up. Sure. And while I pull it back up, um, do you want to talk about what you did today and what we'll be doing for the next two days? Yeah, so given the time crunch, I, I, wa I will uh, be focusing on polishing the UI as well as uh, most likely creating the web uh, version of this app or at least, you know, some part of it. And I would like maybe to ask the user which part of the app, the app they would like to see as a web version. So we have two flows here and let's call, let's just simplify and uh, call them two flows. The bottom navigation menu, right, right, the main menu pages, which are these four. Um, I consider this uh, adding a trip as uh, a as, uh, separate experience. So it's you, it's up to you to decide if I would, you know, if you want for me to create these four, which are the first one, second, fourth and fifth, or this, uh, the core yeah, we did a lot of the core flow. So we created a lot of screens today. They look it's great. It's almost down though. Yeah, maybe we'll have chat decide tomorrow what they want to see and sure. what they want to learn. Um, I have back up the, the yeah. map with the trees. This is by Christy. So this is the one that you remember. And, and is this the one that you're going to maybe choose as the winner? Or? Yeah, I'm debating between this one and, um, uh, and the one with uh, colorful icons, probably the last one. Colorful icons. No, not this one. Yeah, this one. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> this Wh is by Nikhil. Which one do you guys like better? <laughs> this is up to you to decide. <laughs> Let's go with this one. Okay. I so like how clean it is. Yeah, Nikhil, congratulations. Good job putting this together. I know you were the first one to submit as well. So congratulations. Good job. Good job putting this all together. The puppy really won you over, didn't Resonated, it? Resonated, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good job with the icons, too. I'm a dog too. person. Yeah, I'm a cat person, but oh, okay. <laughs> dogs are also super cute. <laughs> but yeah, there are a lot of icons being used here. You used them successfully. The navigation super clear. It looks like material design. Yeah, so good job putting this together. Congrats. Yeah, good job, Nikhil. I know that you've been participating, too, asking good questions. So congratulations. Awesome. Great. So we have... Um, just a couple more minutes, so maybe chat if you want to let us know or think about it when you join tomorrow, what you want to see. I know we've learned a lot today. We've put a lot of screens together. Uh, I've enjoyed my time. I've learned a lot about uh, organization and structure and using math to make sure the screens are put together properly. Yeah, absolutely. It's all, you know, it's all refreshing. Just uh, do it uh, and your, you know, brain will be very flexible, sort of. Yeah, yeah. So, are there any parting words of wisdom after today that you want to share with the group? I know that they're all excited to jump into XD. I mean, just to rely on your, like I said many times, rely on your guts, your intuition, your previous experiences, uh, gather inspiration, uh, analyze it, which is very important. If you're just starting, uh, try to recreate some, uh, 
you know, powerful and popular experiences because when you recreate them, you can extract the rules, the, um, the juice, you know, and then decide uh, on your design later, given that knowledge. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I've certainly learned a lot today, and I want to thank everyone for participating. It's been a lot of fun talking about our different travel locations we want to go to. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited about tomorrow, so. As well, I'm yeah. Excited totally. to learn more. Thank you for showing us all your work today. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for it. having me. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> all right, thank you, everyone. Bye.